Okay, so that's the idea for manual mode. Then we will talk about more advanced technique, which is the LACP mode. So LACP, we have already said that it is short for a link aggregation control protocol. This is a protocol, and we can use this protocol to do the link aggregation. So the idea is like this. There are several interfaces and links, and to configure the link aggregation, actually they will first send several messages. So this message is called the link aggregation control data unit, LACPDUs. So here, this arrow means the LACPDUs. And in this message, several informations are included. So for example, the device priority, the device priority of switch one, for example, the MAC address of the interface, the interface priority, and also the interface number, okay? So a lot of information should be included in the LAC PGU. And when the message are transmitted, these switch, the, 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 the other switch can receive it and can send back some LAC PGUs. And then they can exchange information and then they can um, negotiate on the number of uh, links and the working mode of the user trunk. Okay, so actually this is the idea for the LACP mode. Using the LACPGUs defined in the previous slides, the link aggregation can be achieved. And the detailed process is as follows. So first, in the LACP mode, the number of active interfaces selected by the device at one switch should be the same as the number of switches selected at the other switch. So how to negotiate on a same number? Actually, we need to first select an actor and the actor determines the LACP system and the number of active interfaces and then let the other end to know it. So here, who will be selected as the actor actually is basing on the system priority. So actually each system will have a system priority and the default system priority is this number and a smaller number indicate a higher priority. So here, uh, if the two switches has the same uh, system priority, we will compare its MAC address. The MAC address with the lower number will have the higher priority to be selected as the actor. Okay, and after the actor is selected, the interface priority should be compared to select the active interface. So for example, here, the actor is selected, then uh, both device select active interface based on the property of the actor. So here, a smaller LACP interface priority will indicate the higher priority to be selected. And also the default priority is still this number. If you want to uh, let some interface to have higher priority to be selected as active, then you can manually change the priority to be a lower number. And if there are uh, multiple interfaces have the same priority, then we will compare the interface number. Okay, The number with the smaller one will have high priority to be selected as the active part. So here, if the maximum number is two, we can find that there are totally four links. Then we, we should select two with the higher priority as the active link. So here, uh, as all the interface has the same priority, we will compare the number. So the number one port and number two port will be selected as the active port. Okay. And the links on the active port will be selected as the active link. So there are two active links and two inactive links. And actually, when one of the active link fails, the LACP can automatically select another link with another inactive link with the highest priority. So here it is the port three as the active link. 
so they can still maintain two active links. This actually ensures the overall bandwidth uh, doesn't change and it has quickly recovered from the fault link fault and the service are not interrupted. So this is the benefit of Ether trunk. Okay, so this is an example. So here you can see that we have two switches. The MAC address is shown as follows, and there are four ports. And the first exchange, the LAC PGUs. And after receive LAC PGUs from each other, they can compare uh, and to select the actor. So here, because this bridge has the lower uh, MAC address, so this bridge, this switch has been selected as the actor. Then the next step is that the actor should select the active port based on its port number. So here you can see that they select one and two as the active interface. And then they will send this information to the other switch by using the LACPDU. And then after uh, receiving this uh, message, the switch two will get the result and give the feedback to confirm the selection of the active interface and active link. So the switch two will let these two interfaces to be active and then traffic can be exchanged on these two active links. So in this way, the election of active links is complete. So that's all for the active link selection process. So after that, the uh, link aggregation has been achieved by using the LACP uh, protocol. Now let's look at another problem, which is the load balancing problem. Still remember that why do we need to use the Ether trunk? Because we want to provide more bandwidth. There are more links. We want to achieve more bandwidth uh, instead of only one link's bandwidth. To explore this benefit, we need to send the packet on all the links, right? So there are actually will be a different kind of load balancing method. So we can balance the load on the per packet level, which means we can send one packet on one link and another packet at another link. Okay. And also we can have this load balancing on the level of per flow level. So which means maybe there are one flow from PC1 to PC2, another flow from PC3 to PC4, but these two flows all go through switch one to switch two. Then we didn't separate the traffic in packet level. Instead, we separate them in flow level, which means one flow goes through one link, another flow goes through another link, right? So uh, we have these two different kind of load balancing. Actually, which one is better? Let's look at this example. If we divide them in packet level, actually there will be a problem that one from here, one from here, one from here, because they go through different switch, so the delay will be totally different. So in the receiver end, the packet may be out of order and we need to spend a lot of time, a lot of resource to reorder them. So this is not what we want. So actually the per flow load balancing will be much better than the per packet load balancing. And this is the recommended method. Okay, so uh, if we keep them, we keep the packets in each flow through each link, go through each link, then we will find that the order will keep in, in sequence. We don't need to reorder the packets. And meanwhile, we do achieve the load balancing, right? So this one is better than this one at most cases. Another thing you need to know is that actually we have different kind of load balance. Some are good, some are bad, but they are not always one better than another. They will basing on different scenarios. Maybe at certain scenario, scheme A is better. At another scenario, the scheme B is better. So this is an example. But we can see that first, the Ether trunk can balance the traffic based on a lot of things. So for example, they can base it on the IP address or MAC address of the packets. And you can configure different kind of 
uh, load balance mode and distribute based on different rules. So for example, you can either balance the load according to the source destination IP address, or you can also divide them according to source and destination MAC address, okay? However, in these cases, so for example, in here, if the traffic from the same MAC address, so there are three flow, and these three flow, source and destination MAC address are all the same, but the IP address of it are different. We assume these three flow go through. So you can see that if we use this IP address mode, they will go to different links, right? Because they have different IP address, so they will go through different links. However, if we separate them according to the MAC address, these three flows will be viewed, will be think of as the same flow because they have the same MAC address. So they will go through the same link. So in that case, actually this one will be better because at this example, the flows can be separated into different links and the load is well balanced. Right. But you can see that in this application, the MAC address mode will be better. But think of another case. If multiple flows have the same IP address, but different MAC address, then this mode will be better. Right. So you can see that with different traffic, actually the proper or improper relationship will be changed. Okay. So uh, you we need to allocate the mode we need to select the mode based on different application scenarios.